I want to tell you a story about a tree that became a forest. The story starts not with a tree, but with a log. And not just any log, but a ledger. My name is Yuran, and I work as a staff engineer at COIL on open source infrastructure for the Open Interledger Protocol. Like internet protocol for payments, send a payment around the world instantly from any wallet to anyone, no matter who they bank with, no matter the currency. Some Interledger gateways already process a thousand micropayments per second. At this scale, we saw generic databases hit the wall as Rolox block updates to the same account. The nature of payments is to debit many accounts on one side, but credit only a handful of accounts on the other, which means group commit can't fully amortize FSync. So we did what Jamie Brandon would do and tried rubbing a database on it. We designed a financial accounting database called Tiger Beetle to process a million journal entries per second. We moved the financial primitives to the database and made it highly available to ease the ops burden with replication on the primaries disk plus a backups disk before acting to the client for durability. This replication is optimal, but if you blink, you'll see that this is also a consensus protocol, not Paxos, not Raft, but Brian Oakey's view stamped replication or VSR for strict serializability plus Barbara Liskov and James Carling's deterministic view change, which doesn't suffer from dueling leaders. VSR and what you can do with it is biodigital jazz. Proofs for Paxos and Raft often assume a world of perfect storage. They're correct for the network fault model, but fork the log when exposed to storage faults. So Tiger Beetle's consensus was designed to survive radioactive levels of corruption across all replicas, even the leader, and to have tail tolerance for noisy neighbors in the cloud with P100 latency of 10 milliseconds per 10,000 transactions. The architecture is a pure fault tolerant function or replicated state machine. You call the function with the same inputs in the same order and every replica gets to the same result or state. This is with a simple single threaded design inspired by Frank McSherry. And for readability and an awesome compiler experience, Tiger Beetle is written in Andrew Kelly's Zig. So VSR gives us a replicated log on disk, the primary appends to the log as requests come in, and then we run the requests in the log through our state machine function to get to the same in-memory state across the cluster. But we can't let the log go on forever, or startup times would suffer. We need to snapshot the in-memory state to disk so that the log can wrap around, but if the state is a few gigabytes, then writing to disk can take minutes. So snapshotting must also be incremental. And for performance, we don't want random writes. This is how we solve incremental snapshotting for the write path. Step one, requests get appended to the log. Step two, requests get executed in order. And the key value inserts or updates resulting from this execution get added to an in-memory buffer, which is say four megs. Step three, when this buffer fills up, we sort the keys and values in it and write it to disk as a table. Then we rinse and repeat to create lots of sorted tables on disk. When the log needs to wrap, we write out a manifest or list of the tables on disk so we can replay the log from there at startup. So with the write path solved, how do we solve the read path? How do we read state that's too big to fit in memory while it's being incrementally snapshotted? First, we check if the in-memory buffer has the key. Otherwise, we check our manifest of tables to find the newest table that might have the key and binary search for the value. To limit the number of tables in the read path from time to time, we compact overlapping tables, merging them to create new tables. So everything is append only, and this sequential write IO is great for performance. Crash recovery is simple. Tables only get added to the manifest once they're on disk. There are no locks, so readers can read while a writer writes for multi-version concurrency control. And we can now do range queries to get all keys within a range, which is great foundation for database indexes. So we started out wanting incremental snapshots of our consensus log, and we've arrived at an LSM tree or log structured merge tree. There's a log, this builds an in-memory buffer, this gets flushed to disk as a sorted table, reads check the tables from newest to oldest, nice range queries, nice snapshots of the database at any point in time. LSM trees are everywhere, and many databases have moved to LSM trees as their underlying storage engine. The most popular LSMs are LevelDB and RocksDB, with 10 years of industry use, so why write a new LSM tree for Tiger Beetle? The answer is threefold, determinism, durability, and efficiency. What if you could run a distributed database on your dev machine as a pure simulation with a single binary and no Docker? 
where you speed up time and train like Morpheus and Neo with fault injection and simulated network storage latencies all derived from a single seed, where correctness bugs in your consensus are automatically detected and where you can replay bugs as you switch on debug logs or hook up a debugger. Inspired by Foundation DB, Tiger Beetle is a deterministic distributed database that can run in a simulator called the VOPA. The VOPA took two weeks to build and helped find and fix 30 distributed bugs in three weeks. It can inject up to 30% corruption on every replica and it's magic to watch Tiger Beetle running smoothly under so much cosmic weather. So test velocity is why Tiger Beetle's storage engine had to be deterministic. We want to reproduce bugs instantly from a seed, but most trees were not designed for this. They also snapshot state differently across replicas. You can't verify replicas byte for byte that they're reaching the same state. And if a disk sector gets corrupt, you can't just copy the corrupt block from another replica because the storage files are all different. So recovery is not as fast as it could be. The research around LSM trees has also accelerated, along with research into storage faults in distributed systems. UW-Madison showed that for correctness and to maximize availability, the local storage and global consensus can no longer be decoupled. You have to integrate them to share the right ahead log. This is critical for durability and the only way to survive Tiger Beetle's storage fault model. Torn writes at the end of the uncommitted log after a crash, bit right in the middle of the committed log and misdirected or lost reads and writes. Very few systems handle these faults, most lose data or shut down the cluster when they shouldn't. Finally, there's efficiency. 10 years ago, IURing didn't exist. Multi-threading and costly context switches were a necessary evil. There wasn't as much focus on explicit memory allocation as we have today in Zig, where Tiger Beetle allocates all memory it will ever need at startup. It can address 100 terabytes of storage, and you can know at compile time that the LSM will never use more than a gigabyte of memory. So thanks to Paul Kong and Pat Morin, you can also bind research tables much faster with an Eitzing allowed. But the toughest problem for an LSM tree is write stalls. If you use buffered writes to the kernel, then you lose congestion control. You have to throttle client requests for a second or two if compaction can't keep up. Here again, determinism is our friend because you can solve write stalls in a tree if you make your compaction incremental and pipelined and compact every time after you commit an operation from the log. You can schedule compaction to eliminate write stalls and have fantastic P100 latencies. Compaction becomes like buckets connecting in series. As one bucket fills up, it flows into the next bucket, which is a little bigger. This fills up, hits the high water mark and starts draining at the same rate into the next bucket and so on. There's never a big wave or splash. The buckets drain to keep up with the ingest rate. But why plant a tree when you can grow a forest? Thanks to Pat Helland, we learned that immutability changes everything. Most of Tiger Beetle's data set is immutable. The accounts are hot, but this data set is small. So storing disjoint data sets in disjoint trees means you don't ever compact sorted immutable data, which again improves write throughput as well as read throughput. If you're looking for an account, you jump straight to the accounts tree. Using separate trees also means that you can exploit immutability even if your workload is unpredictable. The values we store are also small, around 8 to 128 bytes. We can't afford the space overhead of length prefixes, so we use Zig's comp time to eliminate length prefixes in on disk table format, which improves write throughput. And we can do this because for every size key value type, there's a tree in the forest. The memory overhead of a tree is now cheap enough that we can have 30 trees per replica, a tree for every type. Every object, primary index or secondary index key has its own tree with consistency across the forest. Finally, the forest can be more cache efficient by keeping the same data in the same table. Queries exhibit better spatial locality. There's no need to page other data into the cache if most queries only need accounts. Trees are beautiful. When they are deterministic, they're beyond real. And when they are distributed forests, they're breathtaking. Donald Knuth once said that trees sprout up just about everywhere in computer science. Here's to more trees becoming forests and to Jamie for an awesome conference.